Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition stops stories. Two projects designed to improve living conditions in Lambry and Moshi to get on the way. On the heels of the successful staging of the Petos Cup, government presses on with further investment plans for the South. The EU provides a multi-million dollar facility for resilience in the Caribbean. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arcola. The government of St. Lucia and the St. Lucia Social Development Fund have embarked on two projects under the ninth cycle of the Basic Needs Trust Fund designed to improve living conditions in the beneficiary communities. The projects are being funded through the Caribbean Development Bank and the government of St. Lucia. The La Papel Embankment Protection Subproject in Labry will include the construction of a 46-meter-long box culvert with associated drainage works. It will also see the construction of an internal reinforced concrete catch basin. Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, Honorable Leonard Montoute, signed on behalf of the government. One project is a project that has been established in Lavery, that's the craft center, but there were some ancillary works that had to be done to facilitate drainage and some upgrade. And that is being done right now, as you heard earlier, it is in excess of $300,000. And so we are hoping that early in the new year, that, that second phase, so to speak, of the project will commence. And, and I think the contract period is about six months. And so by June or before, we expect that the project will be completed. And I know that, you know, that will bring great relief to the vendors and the users of that facility. The Moshi Cardinal East Settlement Road Rehabilitation Project includes the permanent and temporary works in connection with the construction of a 4.3 meter wide reinforced concrete pavement access road to include drainage works and the construction of 172 millimeter thick reinforced concrete pavement. And uh, for those who are familiar with that area, uh, some work has had been done by the previous parliamentary representative in in the, in the in, inside part of Cardinal, but there was this connecting piece from the Moshi Health Center to Cardinal that is in a deplorable condition, and uh, most of it is going to be addressed by this project. Uh, this project is going to again start in early January, and the, the contract period is about six months, and the cost of that project is in excess of $600,000. I think that will be a much welcomed project for the people of, of Cardinal, will provide great relief to them, and I'm sure it will open up that area for further development. The contract agreements were signed on Tuesday, December 17, 2019. Following the highly successful staging of the inaugural Royal St. Lucia Turf Club Peton's Cup on December 13, the government of St. Lucia is pressing on with further investment plans for the south of the island. The details from Janelle Norvell. To achieve our full potential, we have to develop the south. So said Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, as he reaffirmed the government's commitment to the development of the south. Honorable Chastney explained that the south has the potential to become the premier destination in the Caribbean. The Prime Minister also highlighted a number of projects in the pipeline. And so when you think of the likes of Kingston or Montego Bay or Punta Cana or Port of Spain or Bridgetown, that View Fort has all the potential to be bigger and better than all of those places. I think that the horse race today hopefully gets solutions to us, start understanding what our potential is. That we're able to pull off something of this caliber here in View Fort. And then with the new international airport, the deal that we've done, we're going to do with Royal Caribbean and Carnival in terms of having a home port facility here. The new world-class St. Jude's Hospital that we're going to be creating. We're breaking ground on Sandy Beach. We're breaking ground on AM Resorts. Um, and then also we're going to be breaking ground in January on a new hotel here. But more importantly, the establishment of Lausanne University um, to open up a campus for the Caribbean and Latin America here in St. Lucia. And I think that this is just the beginning of showing that View Fort is a third rep. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, weighing in on the discussion indicated that once the country continues on a trajectory of growth and development, the benefits will be reflected in the economy. 
He explained that significant efforts have been put into the tourism industry with a view of putting St. Lucia prominently on the map. It has to be strategic marketing. It has to be spending your money in the right areas. Our budget is small in comparison to some of the bigger islands. If you take the Bahamas, if you take Jamaica, we simply do not have a uh, marketing budget that can match that dollar for dollar. But what we have certainly done is we have placed uh, an important demand on ourselves to ensure that we are optimizing strategy that we are lean and we are mean, we are innovative, and we're going out there and we're telling people that St. Lucia is the most iconic and aspirational destination for them to visit. So we are very um, focused on, on ensuring that we do that. And I think that that is yielding significant dividends for us. The Pearl of the Caribbean, the Home Port, the Hiranora International Airport Redevelopment Project and a number of hotel properties are some of the projects earmarked for the south of the island. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. St. Lucia's lobbying efforts for heightened global action on climate change was ramped up at the UN Climate Change Conference COP25. COP25 has been dubbed ambitious as it seeks to increase efforts at achieving all the goals in all of the articles of the Paris Agreement, which seeks to chart a new course in the global climate effort. With the release of three special reports by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, small island developing states are quickening their pace to remain economically sustainable and inhabitable. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, in addressing the conference, says that limiting temperatures to 1.5 degrees is still feasible if more ambitious action is taken well before 2030. My government is serious about climate action. In May 2019, the Cabinet of Ministers approved our NDC partnership plan, becoming the first country to have a plan validated at such a high level. We are also proud to be specifically mentioned and referred to in a decision at COP24 in Poland, having been among the 11 countries of the world at that time to have submitted our Cabinet-approved NAP to NAP Central. So we are doing our part despite our limitations and the negligibility of our emissions. But we need to be supported in our efforts, supported in the implementation of our NDCs, NAPs and associated sector plans. Minister Rigobert reiterated the need for all stakeholders to join in the effort to stem climate change and to build resilience. The countries with the wherewithal to support particularly vulnerable developing countries like LDCs and SIDS with special needs, we need to stop play acting in the negotiations area. We need to stop the word smithing. We need to stop the delay tactics and stop doing lip service and giving bare minimum at the end, creating structures and setting up mechanisms that really do not produce what we who are on the front line of climate change expect. Surely we can all do better. We can do more to match our words with action for the sake of the children of this world. The UN Climate Change Conference COP25 took place in Madrid, Spain from the 2nd to 13th December 2019. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Small household electrical appliances, when faulty, can give rise to big problems. If you have just purchased a small appliance from a store and you are concerned about the safety of the item, or an appliance has been at home for some time subjected to wear and tear from regular usage, have it tested by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. It is better to be safe than sorry. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. 
I'm Ryan O'Brien welcoming you to another update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. The art of pole vaulting among students on the island got a much needed boost following the staging of a pole vault summit here recently. Anicia Antoine has more details in this report. The St. Lucia Athletics Association has collaborated with the Monrepo Athletics Academy and the Patricia D. James Secondary School to host the first St. Lucia Pole Vault Summit. The meet allowed athletes across the island to interact and compete while honing their skills and encouraged the advancement of pole vaulting at all levels through education. Andy Bale is the program director at the Monrepo Athletics Academy. Use this as a stepping stone for your own future. Know that after today, we're going to keep moving forward as a nation in this sport. We're going to keep going uh, higher and higher and uh, reaching out to the rest of the world uh, to show them what we can do down here uh, as a team, both on the track and behind the scenes. So besides the, the people up here behind me right now who have been sort of our stars for the week, um, I absolutely must continue to uh, express the gratitude, the thanks, and recognize the, the, um, the commitment of our local PE teachers at the schools across the island. Chief Education Officer at the Ministry of Education, Fiona Meyer, encouraged the students to take advantage of the opportunities being presented to them. You must recognize opportunity. Going to Bermuda, going to El Salvador, going to games in Jamaica. All of these life experiences are going to impact you if you make that effort. And if you are consistent and if you progress at what you're doing, it's there for you. So I'm looking forward to watching my television screen and seeing that some of you are representing St. Lucia. So in as much as you represent your schools, you are going to do even bigger and better things. Commonwealth Games are there. Who knows? Olympics, possibly. The pole vault summit took place from Wednesday, December 9th and culminated with a National Day Street Vault on Friday, December 13th, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. As the year draws to a close, the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports is reminding all national sporting associations that preparations are continuing for the staging of the annual National Sports Awards on February 15, 2020, and as such, must have their respective nominations returned to the Ministry on or before the stipulated deadline of December 27, 2019. The Ministry has already met with a number of associations who have responded to an invitation to attend an initial meeting ahead of the awards. As usual, a number of prestigious awards will be up for grabs from a short list of nominees presented to the Ministry. And that's how we end your update for today, the penultimate for the year. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SIDEMA, and the European Union has launched a multi-million dollar facility to help reduce the region's vulnerability to disaster risks. Here's to sunk in English Francis of CARICOM News Time. The 11th EDF Natural Disaster Facility in Cari Forum program was launched on the 3rd of December at the 11th Caribbean Conference on Comprehensive Disaster Management in St. Martin. Decision makers and disaster management professionals gather to have discussions on improving capacities and building partnerships in the fight against climate change and to strengthen disaster management strategies. The Natural Disaster Facility will be implemented by CDEMA and the Dominican Republic. The EU's ambassador to Guyana, His Excellency Fernando Pons Canto, says the EU remains committed to reducing the region's vulnerability to climate variability and change. He noted the importance of the Dominican Republic's participation for increased cooperation and sharing lessons. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyon. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to satisfaction of basic needs. 
This means that every consumer has the right to basic goods and services that guarantee survival. This right includes adequate food, clothing, shelter, healthcare, education, water, and sanitation. Welcome back. We joined Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Al Creole. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Kenya's Responsibility, with formation and Government of the GIS, a CBP Television National and PIA NTN, Kabuzato Nouvelle A Creole. Visito, Primus Hutchinson. Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, a fait un appel pour l'année plus collaboration en exportation fig pour van et augmenté pour du fig pour l'Angleterre. Les représentatifs Go Greek à Industrie Fig là, en parmi eux, Winfresh, NFTO, et projet de développement et épouvement Industrie Fig, c'est le ci BPIP. Je n'ai plus les chefs du ministère de l'Agriculture pour te discuter et examiner pour ces problèmes là qui a continué à affecter Industrie Fig à cette ci et pour chercher des solutions pour augmenter la vente Fig pour l'autre 4 mois pour venir. Chef officier, exécutif pour Winfresh, Bernard Connibert, déclaré que les agents arrivés pour tout qui est engagé dans l'industrie FIG là, pour parler franchement concernant la situation FIG à cette ci Connibert remarque que ça est nécessaire pour soulager les cultivateurs FIG pour espérer la qualité de là qui ont pour mérité pour l'industrie et pour tout qui est Principalement pour tant, ça c'est tant, finance et investissement pour être capable sauver à bas des grandes compétitions qui finissent à présent. Selon Connibert, l'industrie fait glace à cette ci c'est une qui est très faible pour faire bataille à des grandes compétitions qui sont grandes tout bonnement. Et qui pas quoi, ça c'est à l'opinion, que l'industrie a n'est jamais arrivé en position ça. Il y a vrai que le business fait la terre, l'année de l'autre, Bélier, qui est très féroce et qui a porté quoi sept fois plus fort que l'industrie nous. Quand on conseille qui, malgré tout ça, l'industrie fait la ni on chasse pour sauver si tout qui concerne mette tête ensemble et planer à qui meilleure façon pour du développement et opération industrielle. Et remarquez que l'année pour ni consultant critiquement pour tout d'accord pour travailler ensemble en plan pour sauver l'industrie fait la. Mais, le ministre des Affaires agricoles, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, pas confortable à pièce de bonnement à rapport qui est déjà trouvé concernant des gros supports pour la place fixe ici à l'Angleterre. Il fait plein de la dit, les mots sont déjà trouvés pour l'année ici, pas si fait à pièce de façon. Honorable Joseph aussi désapprêté que le ministère n'a pas trouvé un rapport à son exportation fixe pays. Le ministre agricole a déclaré que ce rapport n'est pas available encore, malgré qu'il est très important. Pour le ministère a trouvé ces informations. Pour savoir des grandes industries qui sont là, c'est nous les venir pour l'exportation. On a Ezekiel Joseph, Vertiki, c'est faux que Winfresh fait un meilleur effort pour procurer ces informations concernant l'exportation de si vous voulez le gouvernement supporter. On a Joseph déclaré que si pas ça, le gouvernement a pris un démarche pour que l'industrie de la trouve ce pouvoir qui est tellement mérité. Les résidents, en commune de Vieux-Sicoué, en chemin, pour recevoir une augmentation dans le service de l'eau Rodwasco. C'est pour raison cela qui fait l'Agence de développement social SSDF, si un argument et puis Wasco pour faire plus de l'eau Wasco available pour commune commune Sala. Représentatif de l'Agence Sala, si un argument le 11 décembre à l'établissement administratif Wasco, projet de l'eau Sala, pour être financé par la Banque de développement Caribla CDB. À bas agence BNTF, et que projet a fait pour pomper de l'eau wasco pour les résidents à commune de Vesicoué. Directeur exécutif pour SSDF, Alison Mathre, parlait de si trois cassements que ces résidents ont été espiancés pour de l'eau pour plusieurs années. Mathre a déclaré que l'argument de la et de wasco a porté grand soulagement pour les résidents de Vesicoué parce que pour plusieurs années, ces résidents ont été pour servir de l'eau la plus seulement et aussi ont été servir de l'eau en tout. Qui s'est ajouté plusieurs maladies. Représentatif pour Gozile et ministre des Affaires, Justice, Social et Égalité, Wadouab Lenad Montout, remercie à ce côté et gouvernement, assistant Sala, côté plus qui y ont 100 résidents qui ont trouvé le service de l'OASCO. Selon le ministre Montout, 
situation qui était existé avant côté les résidents tenir pour servir de l'eau qui sortait en tout qui était posé en l'eau maladie c'est un qui pas oui vivre lever tête les encore alors la vie exacte ces résidents ça là qui est prouvé considérablement facilité pour procurer service d'eau ça là pour résidents vesicoué qui coûter des prix un million dollars pour bâti Your company business asset lisi pour vendre produits agricoles à l'autre pays qui a continué pour faire succès. Mangal Trading Incorporated aba chef li Naila Mangal, j'ai trouvé koyon ce business là qui très avancé en vente produits agricoles hot set lisi. Depuis tant company ça là établi relation et puis export cette louche à l'année 2017 et qui a continué pour vendre produits agricoles pour vendre en Angleterre et puis Joe Caribla bien souvent. Dernier vote qui compagnie fait c'était une grande quantité régime banane pour en la place en fig à pays antique ça porter bonne satisfaction avec met business là antique j'ai parlé pour continuer acheter hot mangal trading incorporated mangal déclaré qui yo ka acheter hot les cultivateurs au lieu cette lesion ci et que yo ka récolter hot bitation yo ça c'est bitation yo ni en baisson mangal aussi encourager avec encourager les cultivateurs pour pas seulement produire plus mais aussi pour diversifier produit yo comme l'agneau grand demande pour produire agricole hot cette lesion ci chef exécutif export cette louche j'ai applaudi et fort compagnie et ka souhaiter pour yo espérer plus succès pour trouver la place ça c'est à les autres pays. Et comme ça, nous avons une nouvelle, nous avons une mission autant pour qu'on regarde, nous avons une vidéo pour que je ne puisse pas considérer comme ça veut la vie, nous avons une autre nouvelle. À quoi est-ce que la présent, nous avons une vidéo pour vous. Michel. Merci en Pearl Primus. Et ici, regardez ce qui se passe à nous, weather-wise. Generally fair and breezy, becoming cloudy at times, with a few scattered showers. The Atlantic high pressure system will continue to generate brisk easterly winds and rough seas across our region during the next few days. Low level clouds drifting with the wind flow will cause a few showers to develop over the eastern Caribbean islands during the next 24 hours. Tides for Castries Harbor low at 2:26 p.m., high at 8:49 p.m. Tides for Viewfort Bay low at 3:53 p.m. high at 9:56 p.m. seas locally rough with waves and northerly to northeasterly swells 7 to 10 feet or 2.1 to 3 meters small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise extreme caution due to brisk winds and rough seas the sun will rise thursday at 6:21 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles. Mm -hmm.